I want to welcome everyone to our uh, first of many National Adjutant Symposiums uh, for the Covenant Family Fellowship of Churches. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll talk about that. Um, today we're going to be covering some of the basics um, for the adjutancy. Um, also, we have on, uh, we have via Zoom with us uh, Bishop Elect Gamble from Brooklyn, New York. Hallelujah. Uh, we'll be going to see him in June. Versus many, many from Brooklyn. Yes. Uh, we'll be going to see him in June to consecrate him to the office of bishop. Uh, so uh, part of his training uh, as a bishop is to learn uh, the proper vestments and things, uh, garments that we wear. Uh, and I meant to bring I meant to bring mine, but I don't. Uh, I, I didn't pack it there. Huh? Uh, but if you notice, I'm wearing a more uh, formal preaching collar, uh, the Westminster collar, uh, come in different colors. I have the solid white one out. This morning I have on the black trimmed in white. Apostle Darson don't like him. Y'all pray for him. We're gonna try and we gonna try and persuade him. No, to be different. Oh yeah. Bless your name, God. Hallelujah. Yeah, doctor, see if we can get the the, the apostle doctor to rock one of these. Come on, somebody. Not <laughs> he said not gonna happen. Um so uh, when we talk about the adjutancy, um the adjutancy, uh the main goal of the adjutant is to sanctify the bishop in the presence of the people. That's right. That's right. Yes. Right. Main goal. Simple. That it don't get no easier. Doesn't get any harder, honestly. Uh, that is the main job, the main focus uh, of the adjutant. Now, there is a difference between adjutants and honor bearers. Yes, come on, tell them about it. Adjutants are ceremonial only. Mm -hmm. They serve in a, they serve during uh, consecrations, ordinations, Funeral. uh, funerals. They serve uh, during uh, the liturgy if you are uh, doing Holy Communion. Uh, on a regular Sunday, uh, if you are an adjutant, uh, you are not on a regular Sunday. Now, if you also serve as your bishop's armor bearer, then you function as the armor bearer. Uh, pastors don't have adjutants. They have them. Come on. They don't like Overseers, uh, unless they are. Uh, a jurisdictional overseer because they have ecclesiastical character, their, ad their adjutant is the chief adjutant for that particular jurisdiction. Uh, so, of course, our bishops, uh, each bishop will be assigned an adjutant. Uh, adjutants can be male, they can be female. Adjutants can be lay members. They do not necessarily have to be ordained. However, if the adjutant is not ordained, it would be more efficient to use them just simply as a ceremonial adjutant and not assign them to a bishop. Let me ask a question. Yes, sir. Would they wear the, would they wear, can you hear me, Bishop Gamble? Yes, I can. If they are not ordained, like sometimes, some people use deacons, some people use other members of the church, and they use them in a ceremonial capacity. Would they wear the white with the deacon stole? Okay. If they're not ordained. Um, not, you know, it, it so now, and this honestly is left at your discretion, uh, because many know that the father of the adjutancy in the Pentecost, Pentecostal yeah. Church is the, yeah. the late Archbishop J.D. Ellis. Yes, sir. You had a question, Dr. Campbell? I'm sorry, Bishop, but your your speech is your your your, your speech is becoming muffled, and I'm, I'm I'm having a problem hearing you distinctly. What are okay. you recording on? What are you? Make sure you're close to what you're talking into. I don't know. How about how about how about now? It sounds pretty good now. Okay. All right. I'll, I'll stay closer to the camera. Oh. Uh, so the late Archbishop uh, Jane Delano Ellis is responsible for founding 
the adjutancy within the African American Pentecostal Church. Uh, adjutants technically are not a church position. Uh, the adjutants generally serve in the military. They are aides to generals, colonels, uh, battalion commanders, regimental commanders. Uh, that is what the adjutant. Uh, you know that, that that is where the adjutancy originated with the side of the United States military. Uh, Bishop Ellis then decided that there needed to be something along that line with inside of the church for the Episcopacy. Uh, and so the adjutancy was then formed by Archbishop Ellis. Uh, now, here is the catch. In other organizations, uh, as far as Roman Catholic, uh, uh, Greek Orthodox, or um, uh, so Anglican, Roman Catholic, uh, and the Orthodox Church, they have uh, what we would consider adjutants, but they go by different names. And I have to wait to come back for this part uh, because, uh, take a seat, you're making me nervous. Look. Yeah, yeah I, got you, I got you, bitch. I got you. <laughs> um, uh, inside of what our adjutants do, they're a ceremonial um, as in the Roman Catholic Church, they have uh, acolytes. Uh, they are they serve to prepare the altar. Uh, they prepare the uh, the Eucharistic table. Uh, they carry uh, the processional cross. Um, they uh, they light the candles. So uh, as far as non laity dressing during a ceremonial. Um, during a ceremonial uh, event, um, that can be left at the discretion of the presiding bishop or chief apostle as far as what the attire is for non-clerical um, um, ceremonial adjutants. Uh, because altar workers in the Roman Catholic Church, uh, altar workers in the Roman Catholic Church, bless you God, uh, they, uh, they are they are laity. However, uh, I'm recording this doc, so I'll send you the Zoom link so you can pick up give what we already covered. Um, their 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 laity were Catholics. They were uh, they were a surplus, but they're they're not clergy. Mm -hmm. um, so as far as the advocacy concerns, as uh, with covenant family. What lay what laity will wear will be left at the discretion of the presider. Um, if you are a minister, uh, this was something that I did in my church uh, just here recently. All of my ministers uh, wear light blue clergy shirts. They do not wear black. They don't wear black. The reason they don't wear black, they're not ordained. Uh, in the Anglican Church, those of you, well, let me say this real quick, those that, that don't know, I'm ancient faith, I'm orthodox, so a lot of a lot of what I do and the way I move, you'll notice it's structured uh, based off of uh, the ancient faith of the church. So my ministers don't wear black because they're not ordained. So they were they were light blue. So when we are in a national setting, you'll see a group of preachers. That have on light blue, uh, light blue clergy shirts, uh, and it's simply because they are not ordained. Until they are ordained, they wear light blue. They don't wear black. Now that is a case by case, church by church, pastor by pastor. Uh, that's just I don't want nobody uh, thinking that uh, are they out of order. They're not. Light blue, sky blue. Uh, is permitted within within the church. Um, so what we're going to cover real quick are the different colors. Uh, the different colors. Okay. If you cold, Doc, you put your hand on you. Yeah. You all right, yeah. man? Listen, my hand. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not going to put mine back on. <laughs> uh, so the different colors. Uh, as I said, starting off light blue uh, or sky blue. Um, this again, this also for those of you that just got here, this is being recorded. Uh, it'll be on YouTube later on tonight. 
Uh, and then I also have the Zoom link with uh, Bishop Elect Gamble that's available for you guys to go back and review this. Uh, sky blue for ministers, case by case. That's at your pastor's discretion. As a pastor, you have the, you have the discretion uh, because all of the churches inside of Covenant Family. Yes, yes, yes sir. Yes, sir. Yes, yes sir, Dr. Gumbel. I'm sorry, but there is, there is, there is an extreme amount of dissonance in our connections, Bishop. Yeah. I, don't, I don't know whether it's me uh, or, or... I think I'm also might have a pen or something. I got one. Okay. Um, I, mm -hmm. Look, do they got one for you? Can you ask what the Wi-Fi is? Let me try connecting to the Wi-Fi. It may be my signal on my tablet. Okay, all right, because I have Wi-Fi. Yeah, so my, it may be the signal on my tablet that is uh, causing the causing the break. Okay, thank you. Um, so as I said, uh, uh, and I'll, I'll go back over anything you can't hear. Thank you, Bishop. No problem, uh, sir. Uh, as I said, the colors, uh, as far as uh, light blue, that's a case by yes, that is case by case, pastor by pastor. Uh, as a senior pastor, you have the you have the right to determine what your ministers and your deacons wear. They don't have Wi-Fi. They don't have Wi-Fi. Let me let me try with my phone. Uh, my other phone. Okay. I'm gonna turn my hotspot on on my phone and connect. Uh, give me one second. You, I'm not getting rid of you, but you, I, my screen's gonna go blank for a minute now. Okay. All right, so that should be better. I'm connected to my, I, I, my iPad is not connected to my iPhone. Okay, great. All right. Um, so again, as far as shirt colors go, as senior pastors, you all have the right to decide what your ministers wear. Covenant family, uh, while, we are, while we are one church uh, with multiple churches in multiple locations, all of our churches are independent. What does that mean? That, that that means that myself and Bishop Johnson, or excuse me, Apostle Johnson, don't dictate your church, right? Your church constitution is your church constitution. At no time can Covenant Family come in and say, this is the way you'll run your service, this is how you'll do this. We don't do that. Unless we are invited in, we don't step in. Uh, so all of our churches, all of, them, all of your churches are uh, we are uh, uh, what they call autocephalous, self-governing. Yes. Right, or autonomous. Autonomous. Autonomous, self-governing. Yes. Right, you, yes. you, you govern your church, uh, but a few times a year what happens is, is that your church comes together to be a part of the larger church. Right. Uh, and, and at that time, while we are all pastors, our senior pastor is our chief apostle. Amen. Uh, uh, he is the senior pastor. I then become the assistant pastor because Covenant Family Fellowship of Churches is one church with multiple churches in multiple locations. So in a national setting, we are one church. Uh, my church, uh, my church, uh, when uh, Apostle is uh, serving as our chief apostle, my leadership is then submitted to his authority. Mm -hmm. So if he tells my deacons, I need this move, they don't come and talk to me and go, 
well, hey, he asked me. No, no, because right now in a national setting, he is your pastor, not me. Amen. Um, so um, as far as so as far as ministers and what they wear, let's let's go ahead and dispel a rumor uh, real quick. I'm really, I really like this part. Uh, the tab. The tab can be worn by anybody. The, the, the uh, ortho, Roman Catholic, Orthodox, Anglican bishops wear the tab collar. The tab collar does not identify you as a minister. So you'll hear people say, and, and deacons can wear deacons can wear tab collars. So lay can wear tabs. Laity, laity can wear tabs if they are serving. In a ceremonial capacity. So if they if they are serving as an adjutant, they can wear the, they can wear the tab collar. Okay. If they are serving as an adjutant, laity can. Uh, but for laity to walk into the church with a, a collar on, you just told me the Lord you, called you. Got order, yeah. <laughs> you just said the Lord called you, and I'm about to put you to work. <laughs> uh, so the full collar, uh, the full band collar, tab collar. As senior pastors, that's at your discretion. Uh, my clergy can wear, as for my church, they eat whichever they're most comfortable with. We wear bands to get ordained in my church. So there you go. Uh, apostle in his church, they wear you wear the tab until you're ordained. For me, my clergy, they wear they wear a they wear a sky blue or light blue uh, clergy shirt <coughs> until they're ordained. They don't, get, they don't get to wear black. You wear that way. We know you're not with the rest of them. No, no, they, don't to wear black. they don't wear black. No, sir. They wear light blue. This is why in the Anglican Church, uh, their non-ordained wear sky blue tippets. That's how you know who's ordained and who's not. The tippet, the yep, yeah, sky blue tippets are for men, for ministers. Or for unordained deacons. But they wear sky blue shirts, not tippets. They ain't wearing class A. They ain't wearing tippets. No, they do. Now, here's the difference. Oh, so yeah. here, the, here's the difference. In the, uh, uh, as far as the Anglican church goes, uh, and I'll use them because we wear Anglican vestments, so a lot of my references will refer to the Anglican church. Uh, in the Anglican church, everybody dresses like an elder. The difference is, is again, their ministers or their unordained deacons, they wear a surplus, black cassock, sky blue, tippet, no chain, no cross, no nothing. Elders wear black. Inside of covenant family, and I don't think we ever really settled on this, uh, the only thing that's uniformed are elders. All elders wear uh, the white surplice, um, whether you want lace or not. Yeah, no, no, no. That's up to you. I don't think we've Ever made a hard stance on everybody's going to wear this particular surplice. Um, black cassock, either 33 button, or you can get the Anglican cassock, uh, which only has three buttons. Bless your name, God. What's the name of making my new one? Because <laughs> I can't keep but I'm too big to keep buttoning up 33 buttons. Y'all pray for me. I'm, I've been, I've been, that I'm gonna get that or I'm gonna get a zipper put on there and I'm gonna just zip it up. Ain't nobody got time. Um, but uh, our elders wear a black cord. Now for senior pastors, uh, what we have talked about is that senior pastors uh, will do a black and gold cord. That's how we'll know the difference between the elders and the pastors. Because right now, if we put elders and pastors side by side, I don't know who's who, unless I happen to know that you're the pastor. So uh, senior pastors can uh, wear the three strand silver and gold, or sorry, it's not silver, black, black and gold uh, cord with a silver cross. Silver. Now, um, so that is the that is the attire for our for the pastors and elders. Uh, if you're ordained, black tippet, <coughs> white surplice, thirty three button black. Please do not wear a nine button cassock. 
If you are having issues obtaining your vegetables, say something to somebody and we'll help you. But we don't, we don't. Have Auntie, Auntie Joanne. Yeah, we don't, we don't do that. We don't do that. Uh, now, people, people make the argument that we wear Anglican vestments, but the cassocks that we wear are Roman Catholic because they have 33 buttons. Now, they have two different types of Anglican cassocks. Can you stand up real quick, love? So he's got on the, come this way so Dr. Gamble can see you as well. So he has on uh, an apron. Their cassock is made exactly like this. It opens here, here. We got a lot of more buttons on yours than mine. But this is this is traditionally the style for the Anglican casting. Versus 33 buttons, right? The other difference is the Anglican casting has a wider base because they typically wear the preaching bands in their casting. <laughs> Don't be a hater your whole life, your grace. Um. Hey, <laughs> what you say? Don't worry about it. Don't call Steve. Um. So this is this is the setup, except it goes all the way down. Um. This is just the apron, so it's like a smaller version, a sleepless version. You can go ahead and sit down. Of a of a straight cast. Of a of an Anglican single breasted. Or what they, that one is called a double-breasted cassock. Um, but we don't, we don't do the nine-button, we don't do nine-button cassocks. <laughs> don't, that's a preaching cassock. Nine buttons. Now, Anglicans do have a full-length button-up cassock. It's a 39-button cassock for their 39 Articles of Faith. If you don't know the 39 Articles of the Faith, I would recommend you getting a 39 button casting because I'm definitely going to ask you what the 15th Article of Faith is. Wow. Right. You got the 39 to the first. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Listen, I'm going to get you right in the middle. What's the 30? What, what is the. The, re, the reason being is because just because it looks good, don't mean you need to put it on. Amen. Right. 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 People right. have to understand choir attire and fashion. Yeah, we don't wear this stuff because it looks good. Now, I'm not going to lie. My, I have a new shoe. This is a brand new set of vestments. I paid too much money for it. It's a brand new set of vestments. I like the contemporary style Shamir. I like it better. So my argument is that I would like all of us to go to this. And I got one first so we can see how it looks. <laughs> okay. Um, this is the <laughs> This is the contemporary. Uh, now it still it, it buttons, whereas the older version of the Shamir is open, the more traditional. With just one hook, yeah. With just the one hook. Mine, however, has three. But they are already together. I have two buttons on the inside that overlay and close it up for me. Oh, the Shamir, since we're talking about that, is not the prophetic garment. Don't, don't let people lie to you. Let me take it down. This is not the garment of, of the prophet. This is an abbreviated doctoral role as the bishop is the chief priest and teacher of the church. Whether they have or not, put DD behind their name. Because, mm -hmm. seriously, because really? a, lot, a lot of bishops, I know here in Georgia, once they get consecrated bishops, especially if they have Reformation, they put DD behind their name as, as giving themselves the honorary uh, title of doctor. Right, because right. of their leadership. Now, that, that's what they do now. I'm not doing that. That's what they do now. Um, wow. So, the Shamir is an abbreviated doctoral robe. Mm -hmm. Now, in, inside of <clears throat> did you have a question, Dr. Uh, Bishop Gimbal? Oh, no, sir. All right. No, sir. It's also designed to look like a riding coat. Like the prophet, this ain't the um, uh, mantle that Elijah gave to Elijah. 
Every time I go to a consecration and hear that, I cringe. I wow. cringe so bad wow. because I'm just like, you're setting that bishop up to fail because now he believes a lie yeah. about what it is he was. Because they will tell, as the bishop, you should be able to be a prophet. If the Lord didn't call me to be a prophet, Amen. guess what I'm not going to do? Amen. I'm not going to prophesy. Amen. But then you will find, you will see a lot of bishops who try to walk in the office of a prophet because somebody at their consecration told them that they now have the mantle. Bishop, Bishop and Lucky Gamble, what happens here in Georgia, and I don't know if it's that bad in New York, a lot of these leaders in Georgia, they don't study. And they don't give a solid word. So in, in, in the stead of studying and really feeding the people, they begin to walk in the office of a prophet. And they start telling people, you know, they're going to get checks. And they, if they play the tambourine, their son going to get out of jail. And all kinds of foolishness. So seriously. And, that, and Bishop, I'm telling you, you can do that in the place of actually studying the word. So you can probably get up there week after week, properly exegete scripture, and tell people the truth. If you don't study, you can't exegete scripture. So they use the office of a prophet instead of instead of really breaking down, they use the office of a prophet and just start telling people that they're gonna get money, they're gonna get checks, and and, and God gonna double their EBT cards and all this kind of stuff. And that's the kind of foolishness we get down here. They cross a line. Yes, sir. <laughs> yes, sir. Yeah, so mm -hmm. uh, now, um, some side notes about the shamir. The shamir can be worn by itself. You don't have to be in full choir dress to wear the shamir. Uh, I, I, we haven't talked about this. I don't know, but typically the shamir is reserved for the bishops only. However, our overseers, some of them, not all of them, but our jurisdictional overseers, because they have what's called Episcopal character, wear the Shamir as well, because they have, uh, as I say, they have Episcopal character, so they have some authority as the bishops do. They govern a jurisdiction, so that gives them uh, ecclesiastical authority in that sense. So we permit some of our uh, overseers. We don't make a bunch of bishops, so we have different levels of overseers. Right. Uh, we have our jurisdictional overseers, and then we have uh, our auxiliary overseers, which are pretty much department heads. Uh, so Overseer Fisher from uh, Texas is over uh, our public relations for the entire fellowship. He does all of our flyers, so if y'all need flyers, that's who y'all need to get with. I talked about that after the um, afternoon. Uh, but Overseer Fisher, he is auxiliary overseer. Uh, so while he is an overseer, him and overseer love are not the same because overseer love is over a jurisdiction. He is over a department. Right. So we have two different, uh, what happen in most organizations, what they'll do is they'll elevate bishops so that they can put them over departments. Bishops need to be pastors. There is no bishop of protocol because you cannot pastor protocol. Mm. Oh, wow. <laughs> Wow. Ooh, listen, I ain't come to play. Listen, they messed up. They they done messed up this year. I ain't come to play with these folks. Uh, now, the job is around a lot. A lot has to be straightened out, especially if you visit other churches and you see things. You're like, well, why is that that? Yeah, there is no such thing as the bishop of protocol. The your, your primary protocol officer within a, within a fellowship should be your adjutant general. Right. Right. Okay. Um, he knows all the protocols. Because he, know, yeah, because he knows all the protocols. And next to your adjutant general uh, would be your adjutant chamberlain because your adjutant chamberlain is responsible for the attire that the organization wears, making sure that everybody's tipping is the correct size, that their patches are on where they need to be, um, that bishops have on the right colors. You do not, I'm not trying to be petty. All information. Because yeah, other folks wear what they want, but it's out of order as a bishop or a chief apostle to be consecrated in the Shamir in a nine button black cassock. Yeah. Yeah. 
We don't do wish vessels. We don't. We don't do that. We don't do onesies. That's that's a mess. First of all, you better order now to get congregate next year. <laughs> and then, and this is this is why because this, this isn't just a tire. These garments are sacred. Amen. And you ought to have enough respect for what you're about to put on in representation of your ecclesiastical work to not spend twelve dollars on. You yeah. gotta pray for it before you. Yeah, before you, on, fr on Friday before, night before you put it on. We have prayed over your garments yeah. before you even ever put them on. On Friday, on Friday night after service, okay. uh, you'll bring your vestments to the church on Friday night. We will then, uh, myself and the rest of the adjutants, we will go ahead and prep the table for Saturday morning. There is an entire ceremony that takes place before the bishop puts on his yes. garments. That's right. Yes. 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 Because this isn't. These aren't just clothes, right? This isn't just right. something that you wear. Right. Uh, the, we going stemming all the way back to where, uh, where uh, stemming all the way back to where in Genesis, uh, God told Moses, He said, "Listen, set aside Aaron, and now we're going to distinguish Aaron from the rest of the people." Right. right. This is this is why, and 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 I used to be real big uh, when I first started pastoring. I didn't I didn't wear I didn't wear a suit of church. The reason I didn't wear a suit of church is because I felt like as a pastor. I wore suits because I was told to. I'm, I'm the pastor now. I do what I want. Mm -hmm. But I understand from my time in the military that you will really see me more in civic attire than you will a regular suit because this is my duty uniform. Mm -hmm. And I, be I believe that the reason the church has become so lax is because the pastor walk in in jeans and a t-shirt mm -hmm. and the people don't respect him as the leader no more because he looked just like them. Yeah. And so now my, 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 my now my level of respect for you. Let me. I feel yeah. like pretty close down. Down. I, I, I mean, I'm, and I'm not. I'm not saying you gotta wear a civic every Sunday, but 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 you know, there there ought to be something different, uh, Doctor Gamble. As a bishop, the way you pray, you shouldn't still be praying like your pastor. The bishop or a deacon, the, the, the bishop sets the tone. When you walk into church, everything about church, everything about service ought to change. Your 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 very presence ought to set order and correction with inside of the body. Amen. Right? So the Shamir can be worn by itself. Um I'm not. I'm not sure uh, how how Apostle feels about uh, people having their own shamirs. Now, real quick, if you decide that you want to wear one uh, and it's brocade and decorative, that is not an official garment. Uh, some of these garments they look nice, but they're not official. Uh, 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 if you notice, all of our stuff is solid, plain. Plank. Right, yeah. It's not designed to draw the most the most elaborate stuff you will see uh, that the bishops wear are their coats, their miters, their chasubles. That's maybe, it. And maybe a decorative cross. And may, listen, I I definitely got the most blinged out crosses. I don't, have, I don't have mine with me, but yeah, <laughs> a decorative cross. Um, I, I definitely have the most blinged out crosses. Family. I got them in all shapes and sizes. <laughs> um, so if you if you as a pastor you want a shamir and you just want to wear it, that's fine. Don't show up to nothing official. But he might have things at his own church and he wants to look, you know. Yeah, if you fine. yeah, if you wanna if you wanna do it for official things at your at your church, that's fine. But um, within the within the fellowship, when you come, we have a specific order right. for what, what we expect from our elders, our overseers, our bishops and apostles. You have a question? Yeah. We can wear robes in our own church. Yeah, you can wear, you can wear a robe. You can wear a nine-button casket. You can wear a pulpit robe. You can wear a robe in, within your own church. Yes, sir. Uh, somebody somebody called me one time. Some, somebody called me. Because cause they, saw, they saw Overseer Love and a purple and a purple jacket. And when I thought he was just an overseer, why he got on purple like he a bishop? I said, at his church, he do what he wanted to do. <laughs> but 
But overseer law will not show up to a covenant family event in purple. Why? Because he knows that. Yeah. Now, what he wear at his church? Because again, we don't govern his church. We don't govern anybody's church. Yeah. So because we don't govern his church, we're not gonna come down on him to all inside your church. You wear this thing. And, no. And let, me, let me say this to, to Bishop Gamble because you know you and I have talked, uh, Bishop Elect, about some of the pastors in New York who you think will be interested in our fellowship. That's one of the main things that I need you to push. We don't try to govern any pastor and what he does at his church because that would turn a lot of people off. And some people have rules across the board. Uh, if you're in the Church of God in Christ, you're going to do what the Church of God in Christ does in every church. Yeah. Some, some people have rules across the board. It's, we're a fellowship. It's not my job. Now, if I see or we see or if you see a pastor who's doing something that's absolutely out of order, making him look crazy, it's your job as a bishop to go to that pastor and say, hey, man, you know, A, B, C, D, whatever. But we don't govern pastors and their churches. We govern. Now, there is a uniformity when we all come together. Yes, of course. But when you're at your church, you know, and I've heard people say, I don't want nobody tell me what to do with my church. But then you need to come here to this fellowship. Yeah, yes, we're, yes. Not, we're not trying to tell you. We don't want to tell you what to do. Church. Now, what we will do is make sure that you ain't at your church looking dumb. And if you look dumb, we'll help don't go on social media. Look dumb at your own church to your own people. Yeah, <laughs> turn your live off. Um, and I appreciate it. And if I may, if I may, you see, uh, one of the cornerstones of the Baptist church is uh, being out of the spot. The autonomy, yes. And, and, I, and I hold that, I hold that friendly deal. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, we don't supply yeah. pool. We don't supply pool pits. We don't do any of that stuff. That's your church's job to do, unless they come and say, "Hey, you know, we need a pastor. Can you help us with the process of, you know, the pulpit committee and stuff?" We don't supply pool pits or anything like that. We leave that up to the churches are completely autonomous. My, my church. That's how we gonna win some of them Baptist boys in New York, Doc. My my church and our church constitution. It says that regardless of who's the pastor of that church, my church has to stay connected to Covenant Family. Should I die? Should I die? The closest bishop to to Indiana, or whatever, or closest bishop or overseer to Indiana, is the is now the chairman for the search committee to find my replacement. That's in my church constitution. Right, right. I understand. Now, he didn't know that, but I did. I just Th that's in my church constitution. Well, because the CFFC, because <laughs> I, no, I, I just I just I just believe oh, yeah. I I just believe I, I just believe uh in 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 connection. My church wouldn't be what it is had he not poured into me. So why would I want that to, to ever leave where it got its start from? Wow. So not only that, but we all know how it is when black people die. In the church, when the leader died, there is no game plan. There is no line of succession. It's, it, we, we look real messy. We look good in our garments, but but then after we take them off, and then after that, all hell breaks loose. I avoided that by by putting things in black and white. It's legal. The closest bishop is, is now the chairman of the search committee for my church to find my replacement. And if they decide that, watch this, I got a preacher in my congregation that's ready to pastor, bam, there go y'all new pastor. My church constitution says yeah. that it's Biden and nothing, you don't like the new pastor, find you a new church. It is better than, it's better than the fighting. Yeah. And, and Dr. Gamble, you know, it's better <laughs> than the fighting, man, because, and, and, and we talk, like I said, we talked about this, some of those pastors, you mentioned Joe, who's a friend of mine, a mutual friend of ours, and some of those guys, they, they would love to be a part of something like this because most of the things that they get into want to kind of take a piece of their autonomy. 
They're not going for that. They're not going for that. We don't want their autonomy. Do what you want in your church. We want to come together as a fellowship. When we come together, the uniformity is there. When you're at your church, you do what you want to do at your church. Absolutely, Bishop. And that's a great drawing point that you need to start using because when, <laughs> when, when they come in June, we will have online and paper applications. You can fill one out with a pen if you want to. We'll put it on. <laughs> As, as adjutants, it's important that you guys know what it is that we as bishops wear and what you all wear. Now, you all wear a surplus or surplice. That's what it's called, surplice, not surplice, <laughs> surplice, right? The word is Latin. Real quick, real quick disclaimer, because this, this crushes my soul every time I hear something. It is prelate. The word is Latin. It's not English. It's prelate. It's prelate means early. That is the definition of prelate. Prelate wears a surplus. Yeah, the, pre <laughs> yeah, the prelate wears a surplus. No, it is prelate. Prelate, yes. Prelate. I'm a prelate. He's a prelate. He is a prelate under special circumstance only because he is a jurisdictional overseer. Now, they will tell you that overseers are of the lower, lower house of prelature. That's not true because outside of the Pentecostal church, no one recognizes overseers. Nobody. Nobody else, nobody else has them. So the, 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 the overseers didn't even start until it made it to the Pentecostal church. The prelature had already been well established by the time overseers popped up on the scene. So overseers are not of the lower house of prelature. The lowest house of prelature is the titular bishop, which is a bishop in title only. And his title is of a diocese that no longer exists. Wow. Wow. So you will see somebody in the Pentecostal church who will tell you that they're a titular bishop. Just stop listening to everything they're about to say because everything following is a lie. What what di what diocese what diocese does your authority come from that no longer exists? Because now we got, we got we got questions. Most people use suffragan bishops so wrong. A suffragan bishop is a bishop who is an assistant to another bishop. Right. So technically, I am a suffragan bishop to the presider because I'm his first assistant. I'm technically a suffragan bishop. Got to be to have one so you can have a suffragan bishop. So. Uh, or a coadjutor bishop, which just means that I I, I coexist <laughs> or co-rule with him. It's important as adjutants that y'all know this stuff because if you don't, then when you go to these churches and you see stuff that's not in order, you see stuff that's you'll think that it's the right thing to do, and it's not. Elder, every, elders and everybody wears, uh, everybody below us wears the surplice, right? Mm -hmm. We wear the rochet with bands to identify, uh, to identify us. Now, it's going to irritate us because technically we do it wrong. And I'm going to say that publicly. We do it wrong. There are only two authorized colors, black, red. My Shamir should technically be black because I don't have a doctor degree. I'm going to make somebody mad. Red is not the color of the apostle. It's not. It's not. Red is not the color of the apostle. Red is actually, originally red was the color of the Pope until the Pope, until they got uh, an Argentinian Pope in the 1500s and he wore white because of where he was from. But prior to that, every pope wore, wore red. So what happened was, is that the pope and the cardinals looked exactly alike. They got a new pope from the, from the south who was like, I'm not putting red on because it's too hot down here. He started wearing white. After that, every pope was like, he looks real nice. <laughs> With red shoes. So we're going to change and we're going to wear white as the pope. Red is not the color. Red is the color of the patriarch, a presider, a cardinal, archbishop, but not the apostle. 
As a matter of fact, there were no specific garments for the apostle because apostles and bishops are sacramentally equal. They dress like us. All bishops, y'all might want to write this down. All bishops are apostles, but not all apostles are bishops. All bishops are apostles, but not all apostles are bishops. What do I mean? That some some bishops, uh, or some apostles, were just consecrated. They went from senior pastor to apostle. That is legitimate. If the if the form and the intent are correct, that is legitimate. What about the what about the academia of it? And I say that because. We have we've seen that recently, <laughs> where they go from pastor barely to apostle, but there is a whole lot that needs to be learned between pastor and apostle. It is. And so, why I say what? What about the academia of it? There are a lot of aspects that you miss when you're a pastor and then you're apostle. Amen. You're trying to pastor people, trying to pastor pastors, and you were never taught the proper, you know. So in the, in the Pentecostal church and ministry as a whole, in the Pente Protestant Pentecostal movement, this is the only profession that does not really require you to have anything other than I've been called and I sound good with a hammer. Hmm. You I, I said it was inside of the Protestant Pentecostal organization. The only evidence you need to prove that you've been called into ministry is you sound good with a hammer. That's it. Are you serious? <laughs> God, that's it's true. It's, in this new age church, that's it. That's all you need. You don't need. And don't and don't. You don't move, got don't, no works. Don't no works. Three, don't do three or four keys. Don't modulate. Yeah, if you oh can, my God, if, you modulate. You are anointed. If you can modulate that, you are a presiding bishop by the end of the week. Jesus. He about to come. <laughs> It, yes, it, it's true, it's true, Doc. It is true. They go by, how, like you said, how good you sound with a ham and organ behind you. And yeah. if you can do that, oh, he's anointed. You could have said nothing at all. Wow. Most of these preachers have no substance. And this is, here's the thing. I started preaching when I was 14 years old. I've been doing this 22 years. But before I was allowed to sit in the pulpit, Mm -hmm. As a Baptist boy, mm -hmm. my pastor gave me a stack of things that I had to do That's before right. I could even sit up there with them. I'm not that equal. Mm. Most of the, most of them, you, this is how you can tell. This is how you can tell what type of training they had. Hey, Doc, read scripture. Come on and put your hands together, give God. You see, right, right. Order, read order, order. I just said read scripture. What do you? Mean? Well, wait a minute. Let me let me say this. Don't throw your Doctor, testimony in there. Bishop Gamble, you know, wow. he came up from an, a, 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 an icon named Doctor Daniel Webster Bass. That was his pastor, and I came from an icon who was about a half a generation younger, Doctor Joel L. Parker, and so we understood. Because being a child and being in ministry, we, we were in ministry, but they made sure we still knew that we were children. Yes, sir. Man. And so now you've got children, you know, that can barely read and, and, and pass English in the eighth grade, wow. and they sitting up with collars on and all. No, wow. you're out of order. Yeah. Maybe don't put your Bible down and pick up your grammar book. That's yeah. why we got what we have being posted and all of that kind of stuff because they, they're using the word of God, the Bible. And if you if you can't spell and write and put a comma, I, I, I'm willing to bet you can't exegete scripture. I know you. I know for a comma. I'm telling you. You're not willing to bet. I know you're right. you can. You're right. And, and this, this is the thing. Um, when, I was, when I was 17 years old, I was a youth pastor at my church. I was 17 years old and I, when I got both my ears pierced. And the church went Oh, snap. And they was like, Pastor, you ought to set him down. He went, why? He's still a child. <laughs> well, he a preacher, but he a kid first. A let, him, let him make his child. Didn't you get to make childish mistakes? So let him make his. Well, I'm going to set him down. He's a child. He's, a child. He, he's still a kid. And watch this. 
if his mama didn't have a problem with it. Bishop, B- Bishop Gavin, neither one of us would be mm-hmm. preaching now if, if we may, if they sat us down for childish mistakes. Oh my God, listen, yeah, I was, my ministry would have been over with. It was over years ago. So, uh, so we, we wear these, uh, they identify as the bishop. Uh, now, there are two different types of rochets for the bishop. There is the banded roche, and then there is the lace roche, which this is all solid up until a certain point. It then goes into lace for the bishop. Uh, it's full length, and about knee length, it goes into lace for the bishop. Those are, those are not banded. Those are open. Yeah, those are open. Those are open. So you, if you see a bishop in full choir dress, and he's got lace on, it's a roche. It's not a circle. It's a roche. If it comes down. If it comes all the way down. Now, there are occasions where you will see a bishop uh, in a in a, in a surface. This And that is uh, if he is in a house cassock and cape. So that means he has the mozetto on, he has on a surplus, and he will probably be wearing one of two parcels. He will either have on his... His, his pontifical cord or his ceremonial cord, or he will have on. Can you can you see that, Doctor Gamble? Yes, I can. All right, uh, green and gold for bishop ordinaries. Presiding bishops, archbishops wear red and gold. Right, green and gold. Green and gold for all bishop ordinaries. Because purple is not the color of the bishop. Green is. Thank you. Thank yes. you. Green is the color Thank of the bishop, you. not yes. purple. Yes. This is why you have people lying saying that bishops are princes in the Lord's church. They're not. They <laughs> <laughs> bishops are princes in the Lord's church in the Roman Catholic Church, and it's not even the bishop, it is the cardinals. And the reason being is that the Pope is not just a is not just a spiritual leader, but the Pope yes. is also a sovereign. Right. He is a bishop king. Right. He is the sovereign of a nation. And his heirs are the cardinals, which makes them the prince. princes in the Lord's Thank church. Thank you for explaining Bishops that. Bishops in the so tired of I know we have honorifics. You'll hear us call each other your grace, your eminence, things like that. But we are not princes in the Lord's church because in the Protestant Pentecostal church, we do not have one sovereign that governs us all. Yeah. Um, so we have a couple different crosses. Um, this is probably this is my very first one I got when I first got consecrated to bishop. You see? Oh, you'll be all right there. Yeah, this is this, this is the beginner's cross. That's the one I keep in my pocket. Yeah, this, this is the beginner's cross. It's very simple. It's gold with a purple stone. Can you see that, bishop? Yes, sir. So this this is this is the most basic. Well, I won't say most basic. This is the most basic jewel cross that that you'll find. Most people now, start. Is that, what, is that that's what we're going to put on Bishop Gamble? Yeah, yeah, this one. Unless he decides he wants a different one. Um, no, that's fine right there. All right, uh, this one I I I I change this one between. Uh, my miter hook chain is just a simple gold cross on a gold chain. Bishops wear gold, white gold. Bishops can wear silver. Bishops do not wear cords. <laughs> right. Right. Period. <laughs> Sorry, my stomach started hurting. I don't see Because I've, I've seen nine of them with a cord on them. Yeah. Bishops, don't, bishops and apostles don't wear cords. They wear chains. Um, now, this is discretional, but the cross technically should be worn how overseer love has his in the way that the way that mine is right now, outside. It's called a pectoral cross because it goes between your pectoral muscles. The Roman Catholics, since everybody won't blame Rome for everything, the Roman Catholics they do. decided that when they when they would go to wearing suits, that they would take their cross and tuck it to give them a more professional look. 
That's that, that's that's a that's a Pentecostal lie. That, that's not even. <laughs> that, they don't even. They don't put it there because if you look at it, and most of my crosses have it too. If you look at their crosses, their crosses actually have is actually a crucifix. Still has Christ on the cross. The, the reason the reason being is that it reminds the priest of the suffering of Christ. Now we we all we all excited about the get up. Oh, because oh, he, he died one Friday. Got up. Okay. But early. Uh, okay. <laughs> look, look, look at that one. He thought he shot the devil. Stop that. Stop that. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We get excited about the get up. Watch my boy. Early. Sunday morning, he got up. Mm -hmm. Ancient face, keep him on the cross to remind us of his suffering, to remind us of his, of his humanity and his humility. So most of my crosses, which are probably about that big, they're huge. I got mm -hmm. my, my, I think my smallest cross is like seven inches. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. You gonna come out? You gonna come out to the Catholic Church? I'm not gonna, gonna come, come out, out of the Pentecostal Church. No, it's all right. I still dance with y'all. <laughs> I like my tradition. Uh, so we have the different crosses. Again, your discretion. If you want to take your cross, fine. I ain't, I ain't gonna say nothing. Uh, if you see somebody with their vow, the worst thing you could, especially if they are a bishop, the worst thing you could do, because I had this happen to me at a service, is an elder walked up to me and grabbed my cross and tried to put it in my pocket. And for Whoa. about 30 seconds, Whoa. I forgot that I knew the Lord. Because first off, don't put your hands on me. He was, out of he was completely out of order. No, first, off, first off, your first mistake is that you put your hands on me. Your second mistake was that you put your hands on me. <laughs> and your third mistake was that you put, hands. Was that you put your hands on me. <laughs> the army kicked in. Yeah, it did. And I almost folded them up right there in the, right, right there in the middle of the sanctuary. And he was like, oh, Bishop, your, your, your cross is out. Well, first off, we not the same. So don't ever, don't, don't ever do that. Amen. We not the same. Amen. Second off, as a bishop, <laughs> You ought to know better than to reach for my cross. Disrespectful. Well, I slap your mama. Don't do that. Uh, so if you see somebody with their cross out, just assume that they that if they can't, they go the old school traditional, the crosses out in the open. Um, rings, rings. Bishops can wear silver or gold. Most of our rings are gold. Have a gold base. You notice if we have jewel rings, um, regular, most bishops wear a purple stone if they're not an archbishop or a presider. They wear a purple stone. If you fancy like me, when I am in my vestments, I have a green stone in my in my other bishop's ring. I don't know, I don't know where the camera thing is. Can you see that, Doc? If you can lower it. Okay, I can see. Um, the jewel stone uh, is a sign of our office as the bishop. These are things that you, as adjutants, need to know. Uh, the bishop, uh, the the bishop's ring, signifies his marriage to the church or to his jurisdiction or diocese. Um, with the ring. Uh, we have a couple different type of rings. We have our jewel rings. Then we have what's called a signet ring. Good God, we was moving. <laughs> they shook the building. Uh, we have a we have a signet ring, which typically has our coat of arms, uh, the bishop's coat of arms, or his seal inside of it. Uh, so there are two different rings. Uh, ministers don't wear rings. Elders pushing it, but if you do, it's got to be silver with a black stone. How about that? Pastors, definitely, because that shows you the merits to your church. It needs to be a silver ring with a black stone. It goes an uh, onyx stone. Onyx, onyx for bishop. I forget what the blue stone is called. For overseers, uh, amethyst for the bishops, for regular bishops, rubies for archbishops uh, and presiders. 
Uh, it goes on your right hand. Right hand. hand. Opposite of your wedding finger. Right opposite of your wedding finger. Right hand for us. Okay. Yes. Um, now, at Dr. Gamble's service, uh, you all will see that during his service, the adjutants will do most of the dressing to him. When it comes time for his cross and his ring, please don't touch it. The cross, will, uh, the cross will be put on uh, by his presider. His wife puts his ring on. Absolutely. Do not touch his, don't even, don't even pick it up. If you happen to be the one at the table, don't even pick it up. One of the bishops will present it to his wife, who will then place it on his finger. Uh, now, on the flip side, at a bishop's funeral, his appointments are then given to his wife. Right. Something that you don't bury bishops in their tassel cords, in their pontifical cords. You don't need it, and you take them off. That's it. As a matter of fact, I wouldn't even put this on them because once it's on, and it's just for demonstration. Please don't ever wear this in civic attire either. It's, it's not it. That's no. Oh God. <laughs> stop it. Jesus, stop it. <laughs> Yeah, you, you don't wear you don't wear the pontifical. This is a ceremonial cord. So unless you're in your vestments, you don't put not even with class A only. Yeah, class A only. Let's just do that. that that's safe. Um, but if I'm if the person is is deceased, my head down. How you gonna get this off my neck? Mm -hmm. And which one of y'all finna try and lift my head up and hope my family don't clear? We took, we took your hands off. Yeah. Did you see the struggle? But no, what happened is it was they the way he and Mary put it on so it could easily come off. Oh, okay. Well, yeah. They so, did come off. Uh, we, we, yeah. we, we, we dress. That's that's the thing. The agency core yeah. understands. When we dress, yeah. a, a undertaker, funeral director, does not get to dress a bishop. No, nope, that is done by the when he's When he's consecrated a bishop, He's dressed by bishops and adjutants. When he dies and he's dressed for the final time, he is dressed by bishops and adjutants. That's that's just the way it is. Now, if you a little squeamish around dead bodies, be sick that day. Um, oh, no. <laughs> you know, nobody showed up but me and him when Bishop Adams. And I, I was still in Indiana. I, he I was in Indiana. I, I would have done so it. So Bill and I did it ourselves. Yeah. Undertaker, uh -huh. he has to be in the room, he has to be present because he's the one with the license or whatever. Mm -hmm. Me and Mills did it ourselves. Oh. Because you don't, you don't, and, and I was very bad. You don't get to dress him, you don't get to touch him. Yeah, no, no, that's done by the adjutants. We do it. Because again, even though the bishop is deceased, it is still your job to sanctify the bishop before the people. That doesn't stop because the bishop is deceased. The Zucchetto. Can be worn by anybody ordained. Only in choir attire. You do not wear this with a suit. You don't wear this with an apron. You, if you're not fully Class vested, in choir. You, if you're not fully vested, you do not put this on. Now, this is going to start a lot of uh, stuff. Women cannot wear this. Preaching. The scripture where the Bible says that a woman should wear anything pertaining to a man. That's this absolutely. is what it's talking about. That's absolutely uh -oh. pertaining to a man. That is absolutely pertaining to a this man. This was originated by monks to cover them when they were going bald. See how it fits? When most men go bald, how they go bald? Right there. Right, right there. there. And even the even the Jews. Even the Jews. Those, you never see yeah, a woman with that. Yeah. That that's not that's this is not a woman's attire. This belongs to a man. So see, I don't care if she's a bishop, an archbishop, a, a senior chief metropolitan. I don't care none about none. If she got this on, she out of order. Whoever taught her taught her wrong. Mm -hmm. This is a prayer cap. This is the bishop's prayer cap. Do not preach it. This is the prayer cap. You do not preach in this. When you read scripture and prayer, it comes off. Wow. Wow. Now, in all honesty. During a, during a formal service, during ceremonies, uh, sometimes this will be left on during the scripture and prayer. Uh, during uh, the Eucharist or communion, it's left on during the, during the Eucharistic prayer. 
uh, and the uh, re uh, reading of the Old and New Testament. It's left on. Uh, so there are certain occasions where you can leave it on, but if you just happen, you know. the homilist, the preacher? Yeah, if you're the preacher, every time you pray, it needs to be in your hand or somewhere else. Truthfully, if you are the homilist, once you take it off the first time, once you take it out the first time, I wouldn't put it back on. Uh, the Beretta. Let's help these folks who wear these because they look nice. No, no, sir. I know better. Doctor Gamble, can you see that? Yes, sir. Three wings. Doctor Gamble, his case. Is he permitted to wear the four? <laughs> uh, Doctor Gamble, uh, he has uh, a doctorate degree. Okay. So for bishops like Doctor Gamble, uh, apostle. If they have a doctorate degree, these are academic caps. Yes, they are. Which is why you will see, as he is, in regular attire. And when you wear, if you wear a Beretta, you are the left ear. The left ear is what is exposed. Yep. There's a wing on everything except the left ear. So if you wear, if you don't have a doctorate, you wear a three-wing Beretta. Keep your left ear uncovered. And the left ear is always, is your open side. So you'll see, you, you probably see an apostle in his suit with his Beretta on. And folks will be like, oh, he can't do that. Yes, he can. Because this isn't a liturgical garment. This is actually, it's an academic. So it can be worn, it can be worn while vested, but oh, it can also be worn civic. in civic attire. And you can preach in it. And you can preach in it. I would try, not if you, if you get I do a little bit, you take it off halfway through. Yeah, listen. Start sweating. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and honestly, if you, once you feel yourself starting to sweat, take this off. Because once these bands get messed up, it's you done. now have to purchase a brand new one because you can't wash this. It's done. Yes. Uh, I've learned you can wash it. I've learned you can wash anything. Uh -huh. yeah. We like cold water if you wash it. Not, not yeah. get that cardboard wet. <laughs> we like ain't gonna stiff it back up either. Yeah. Yeah, that's cardboard inside there. So, uh, yeah, now, you start sweating, take it off. Yeah, so I, I, I usually start preaching. You see me, I start preaching in it. And as soon as I get hot, mine got to come off. off. So you feel that steam, you take it off. Now, with all of our garments, they should never be filthy. Collars, that's a big, that's a big one for me. Your collar is white, not dirty brown. Amen. Not, no. not with the black ring on it. Yeah, yeah, unless, it's yeah, unless it's got the black band for real. Yeah. Yeah, and, no. and let me tell you something about the, our collars. They make them in a material that you can put in the sink and with a little door and wash them, and, wash them and they'll look brand new. Now, these, so there's no reason. No these, reason. These, are, these are cloths. I really don't like, I, I would really urge you all not to get the full, the full cloth collars. Just because they are... The, once it's stained, they never, those will never come clean. You'll have to constantly buy these. Yes. With this one, uh, with these, I don't wear them like that. So as soon as, as soon I have a, I have a white one. As soon as I'm done wearing this, matter of fact, when I get back to the hotel, I will instantly wash this and let it air dry. I don't even put it in the dryer. I wash it so that it comes clean, air dry, put it back into a sealed package. Uh, my Beretta and my Zucchero. I keep them in a Ziploc bag. Right. I suck all the air, get all the air out, put them in a Ziploc bag so that they stay looking fresh. As a, as a leader, now my suit probably still a little wrinkled because I had to condense all of my stuff. Um, but as clergymen, as adjutants, as bishops, you, when, you, when you step out, you need to look, you are representing the kingdom of God. Yeah, Don't look right. like no slouch. You're right. Listen, your shoes, your shoes need to be plain. I said, right, come on. get it. So I raccoon. I thought I saw. Lord have mercy. You uh, your I shoes. Uh, if you suit colors for civic attire, suit colors for civic attire. I know that traditionally the Pentecostal church says you can only wear black suits. Uh, that's not true. You <coughs> wear a dark color suit. Don't don't and put you know, it on. In the Caribbean, they wear white. They do. They, they, they wear white. Yeah, civic attire. Your, your yeah. suit needs to be right. solid. Don't go, don't, don't, not no pinstripe. Not not no, no, please say that. Don't. Not pinstripe, checkerboards. No, no, no. Your suit, needs, your suit, it needs to be a solid colored suit. 
black navy, right. something like that. Navy blue, gray, or, or something like that. If you're going to do, even if you're going to do, say you do a gray suit and you decide to do brown shoes, your shoes need to be plain. plain. Don't come to church. Listen, don't. Please you don't put on civic attire with multicolored shoes. No. Don't put on civic attire and Crocs. And don't put on checkered colored socks either. I can't yeah. Your socks. No. Your socks. The reason being is because this stuff is for us. Is modesty. You're not trying to draw attention to yourself. It's not fashion. It's not fashion. No. So you don't need on the Louis Vuitton belt with with Gucci socks. That's stupid. Right. Got a and crush you. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> when it comes to. Uh, I, everybody, I, I don't know if you guys wear them, but I do. I like, uh, matter of fact, my suit for Sunday, I got a few different lapel pins. Not in civic attire. If you have a lapel pin, it needs to be one of two things. Uh, military association, it, uh, academic association, or, or your fellowship or church association. But you don't put a brooch on while you got... You don't put the little flower. No no. As you know, if you ever notice, when I'm in civic guitar, I don't even put a handkerchief in. It's the only time you'll see me without one. I was somewhere in civic attire for a function, and it was. Uh, you got for, any questions, Dr. Gamble? Yeah. No, sir. All right. It was for breast cancer awareness, and I was in civic attire, and and they pinned a uh, one of them, you know, cancer the, thing ribbon. On me. That's a, that's I fine. I have a problem with that. That's you fine. Know, I ain't that deep, you know. Right. That's fine. But as far as decoration and just trying to, no, you yeah. Don't do don't don't, don't yeah. do, that's a that's a big no no. All right. Um, let's see what else. You did the cash. Now that castle or is that an apron? No, this is this is a this is a castle. A three okay. button. Oh, that question when you Yes, sir. What what you got, Doc? Say somebody come in your church and there ain't no bishop, Hit them and they're no apostle, and they walk in there <laughs> full of time. How will you address that? Wait, wait, then that, they walk in with what? 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 Apostle of time or bishop of time. Uh, they're, yeah. they're not, they're not now. They're not ordained. They Are they a member of your church? Yeah. Are they a member of your church? No, I ain't no member. They ain't alone. They stupid. Yeah. You have, to, you have to give some type of leeway for people that just don't know any better. Because obviously that's somebody's never been. I had a guy. Uh, you understand what I'm saying? I understand. Yeah, I see it a lot. I had a guy. I had <laughs> I a guy you, I see it a lot. This guy was a praise dancer. And he came to dance with a white suit on and a full red clerical yeah. collar with a neck yeah, band. Man. And I said to him, I said, young man, no offense, but you will not dance in here until you take that shirt off. What? I always wear it. I said, well, let me mm -hmm. tell you the order. You don't get to wear red neckband clergy and civic and here and minister. You my, don't get to do that. My, my brother, uh, overseer Tommy Clark, mm -hmm. Indiana jurisdiction officer, has a red clergy shirt. Is he coming from New York? Yeah, he'll be in New York. Okay. Him, and, him, and, uh, him and my little brother, they'll be, they won't be Tony there. Coming? Tony and uh, Jimmy. Curtis, about. Curtis is coming with them. They're leaving out Thursday because I'm leaving out Wednesday. Okay. Um, but he has a he has a red clergy shirt. Daryl's coming. Daryl, yeah, Daryl's oh. leaving with me. He, the reason he has a red clergy shirt is because about a year or so ago, maybe two years ago, uh, his his church for uh, Easter Sunday did red and white. He, bought, he purchased a red clergy shirt. Was it appropriate? Hmm. Can At that it? time, it was because he wasn't connected to the fellowship. But when he joined Covenant Family, first thing I told him, "Hey, boy, I burned." <laughs> listen, Doc. Listen, I, I hate to tell Mama her elders is up out of here, but you can in, now inside yeah, your church. You can't do that to Tony, man. <laughs> <laughs> Are you going to free Tony? I don't need no free. I told <laughs> brother. I stayed on Daytona Beach a whole week for two hundred fifty-three dollars. Don't do that at the, at the, at the, at the uh, Hawthorne Estates and Suites or whatever. Oh, brother, 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 you better leave Tony alone. Oh, okay. I, don't, I don't care what he did. I want Tony's side. Oh, you want Tony's side? Yeah. Uh, he blessed me. Yeah, Tony usually takes care of our, 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 our information. 
Talk to he them. gives me he gives me my voucher the first of the year. It lasts for a whole full year. Yeah, he yeah. usually take care of our hotel travel. Yeah. 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 Uh, but no, he but he knows that he can't get outside of his church. He can't wear that shirt. Um, because he got a bishop. If you want to, you can. No, he can't. <laughs> <laughs> no, you do whatever you want to do. Listen, <laughs> you're setting a bad example. Now, Dr. Gamble, when it comes to you, as far as your clergy shirt goes, um, yes, we will put you fuchsia. <coughs> going to fuchsia he's going, no, English purple. He's going, he goes in purple he, first. He'll start off at, he'll start off at English but once, once you drag in, Once you drag in about five or six of your boys, you change it from purple to fuchsia. I'm telling you that yeah. right now. <laughs> Um, rule, the rule of thumb is you can always dress down. You can never dress up. Wow. As, as the presider, he can wear whatever color he wants. If you want to put on royal blue, he can. If you have a fan of royal blue, so I won't put it on, but I could, yes. Not a fan I'm of royal blue. Yeah, I'm, I'm true blue. I'm from the streets. I play for But then listen, I'm definitely about to get me a blue set. <laughs> Just because. For real? Yes, yes sir. God bless you. Yes, sir. Yeah. Seven I got black. I got red. I got listen, white. I got purple. <laughs> Listen, I, I ain't always love the Lord. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, I ain't always love the Lord. Hey, Dr. Do, Gamble, we understand that, don't we? <laughs> um, so you can dress down, you cannot dress up. He can, uh, now, as a bishop, I mean, we don't really care. Your vestments when you first get started will be English purple or church purple. But if you can wear any color purple or you can wear blue. Everyone is permitted to wear white. Or black. Or black. That's universal. Black. White or black. Right. Can wear, everybody can wear white, everybody can wear black. But purple and the blue? Purple, blue. Once you get into the different colors like that, if that's not your office, don't do it. Now, if your church colors are blue and blue and silver, at church anniversary, you want a royal blue clergy shirt, mm -hmm. you are not out of order if you decide to wear that during your church anniversary. At your church anniversary. Yeah. But listen, at your church anniversary, yes. yeah, don't show up to the covenant family convocation in a royal blue shirt. I'm like, let me see your paperwork. Right, you're going to be faster, right? Listen, let me see your paperwork. I know you don't got it because I do it. <laughs> so let me see. It. Let me see your papers, Doc. It's important. It's important to have order yeah. in, in the midst of. Our fellowshipping together is important to have a certain order. But uh, we do not try to govern your pastorship. That's that's your that's your church. Now, as you that, remember that that's your hook, Dr. Gamble. We're gonna get Joe Jones and all them boys. Uh, as you can see, um, the next thing I have is the 33 button cassette. Dr. Gamble, let me let me explain. When you order your vestments. You said you wear a size 50 in jacket, right? That's correct. Order a size 48. When are we, when are we going to start? We got to say. We're talking about tomorrow. Okay. Uh, order a size 48. Uh, right now, I have a 33 button cassette. It's buttoned partially because I step into mine. Yeah, I'm too. not. I'm not, I'm not buttoning on I step into mine too, yes. Yeah. That's the best. That's now. The, you got a 33 button? Button Don't. halfway. And you put it on. Now, uh, step into it. And Dr. Gamble, uh, during, this, during this transition phase for you, you are permitted to go ahead and start wearing the purple shirt. Just you cannot wear a cross and ring until after your appointment. Uh, but you can wear the purple but shirt. But you can wear the purple shirt. Well, it's supposed to be 90 days, but it's close enough. Yeah. yeah close within enough. 90 days out, yeah. But it's close But enough. he got designated last year, so. Technically, true, we should true. have been or, uh, concentrating true. him within 90 days of the designation. True. That is so, true. But we wanted to do it there instead yeah, of here. Instead of here. So you are permitted to wear the purple shirt now. Uh, what we will do at your uh, consecration, uh, when you come in, this will probably be moving forward, the new standard. You will come in with your cassock already on. Anybody got time to be trying to button all your buttons? <laughs> and that's all you have on. Yeah, just, you know, you just, have on any just other the pieces, just the cassock. Yeah, you'll come in and just the cassock. And we'll explain the cassock, but we won't have to put it on and put yeah, it up. Yeah, yeah. We don't, we don't want the adjutants down there trying to fight with your buttons. Because typically, when you vest the, when you vest the bishop, you, one adjutant takes half, takes the bottom half, the other one takes the top half. It takes two peoples to dress a bishop. 
That's like two people with an F. You said people's with an F. I said people's with an F. All right, uh, Pastor Coney Jr. <laughs> oh, 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 we never called you. Dumb with me, bro. I'm positive me, bro. Yeah, so it, it typically takes two people to vest the <laughs> people. It takes two people to vest the bishop. And it's because we have so many garments. Uh, so 33 buttons. You have uh, you have 33 buttons representing the, rep yes. representing the 33 yes. years of Christ's life. Yes. Uh, up under that, we, and we almost done with this portion, we will be meeting again. Uh, What's the Saturday before uh, first Sunday in March? What's the date there, Jeff? The proper. Do you work on Saturday? No. Something like that. Saturday in March. Yeah, what's the no, first no, no, no. Saturday? Well, no, what's the no, first no, no. Sunday in March? The first Sunday in March is the 6th. So the 5th? It's a Saturday. It's the first Saturday? Yeah. I ain't. Okay. Open it up. Okay, so the first Sunday, the first Sunday in March, I will, uh, I'll be back down for uh, Apostles' anniversary. There you go. Um, first Sunday in March, I'll be back down for Apostles' anniversary. That Saturday, we will meet again because what we will do then is we will actually, I'm bringing some other adjutants with me. Uh, from Indiana. What day is that? Uh, the M March fifth. Oh, Sunday before the first. Saturday, Sunday, the first Saturday, Saturday. We will we will actually go through a mock consecration, which means that we will bring the garments. He's preaching on the sixth too. He's gonna preach that morning. He, he who is you? The first Sunday in March. <laughs> the faith. <laughs> yeah, I'm preaching. Uh, so he's so, already gonna be fired up Saturday. Gonna be trying to hoop and stuff in the class, you know. So chill out, Pastor. <laughs> uh, so, uh, so we'll go through a mock consecration. You guys will learn how to set, set how to set the table uh, for the consecration, uh, and then you all, there, some of you all will be designated to certain uh, positions uh, with uh, as adjutants. Uh, as it stands right now, overseer love. Will be serving as our new adjutant apostolic mm -hmm. in replace of Minister Dewan. He will be the adjutant apostolic, which means he will be. He is. He is the only adjutant in the in, in the in the entire fellowship <coughs> that is assigned to a specific individual. The adjutant apostolic serves the presiding bishop. Uh, Dr. Gamble, did you know that uh, Archbishop Brown's adjutant apostolic adjutant, Archbishop Brown had to find him to get his own wallet? He didn't carry his own wallet. The adjutant apostolic <laughs> carried, his carried his wallet and everything for him. He, he walked said, around he with said, empty pockets. He said he wasn't aware of that. Yeah, he walked around with empty pockets. And like when we were in class at conv and convocation and stuff, and it was time for the ministers to give offering. He said, somebody go call Chris. Go go get it. I, I, I ain't got my wallet. He, he carried his wallet and everything for him. Yes, he did. That's how close he was. That's how close the adjutant apostolic. I've always seen that as an example of how close the adjutant apostolic and the presiding prelate are. He, the man, he didn't carry his own money, his own wallet, his own anything. That, his adjutant apostolic carried everything. He walked around with empty pockets. Now, uh, yes, sir. That is. Uh, the last, last garment, well, second to last garment, the band sent you. This is another one they, they lie about. I don't care who see this. Chastity. This is not rep in representation of the towel that Christ wiped whatever with. It's not what this is for. <laughs> I don't even remember the lie. That's I, 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 I think I've heard it, but I'm trying to it's get it. It's supposed yeah. to represent a towel that Christ wiped something with. I don't know. I it, when he wiped his face he, and his, the, 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 yeah. the, the, the print of his face came right, off right. on, on the towel. Just stupid stuff. Just people just make stuff up. <laughs> instead of doing, that re instead of doing that, their research now, this comes in two different styles. The oldest is the rope censure. That's why the, uh, and they have the exact same meaning. That's why it's important to do your research. As adjutants, y'all need to make sure that y'all understand uh, the historical part of church as well uh, as, uh, you know, as well as your function uh, within the adjutancy. The band center uh, is a modern thing. 
to go with the cassock. The rope center is usually worn with an owl up under the chasuble, and the stole is then placed inside of the rope center. The rope center holds the stole in place, so it's not, now you'll never see the stole. Some people actually don't wear them, which is totally out of order, but I mean, I guess their thought is, if you can't see it, how you know I ain't got it on? You know what, this, this training, I dare you to go through another reformation. You're not going to get this. Other, other, other organizations that do this type of training, they, 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 they definitely charge me about $400 for this class. That's where they hate us. us. You're not going to get this. And if you get it, they're going to pay you. You're 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 going to pay you. And you're not going to get this information. So the Bayer Center represents uh, the bishops or the clerics' chastity. Even though we're giving it to them now for free. This, this represents the chastity, chastity to your wife, if you're married, if you're single, to the Lord. Amen. Yeah, man. <laughs> Say it again. Yeah, to the Lord. Ha! Yes, sir. Yeah. Don't be you, you ain't got but a few more weeks. Christian Clark getting married in a few more weeks. I'm to the Lord. Wait to take this off. Hallelujah. Yeah. Praise the Lord. You need to get saved first. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta go over in Indiana. I'm a driver. Yes, I'm a driver. I'm gonna fly, but I'm driving. Yeah, so that, that's what that's what this represents. It's not a towel. This comes in. Uh, this this comes in the the rope center. Uh, the rope center, uh, and this is the band center. Now again, this goes. If I see anybody do this, I promise you, we fight on sight. This goes around here on the left Limp. side. Mm -hmm. the, the, right. the, it should drape over your left, kind of not, not here on your hip. It's not a pistol. <laughs> don't, don't go on your hip. We don't carry pistols right here. <laughs> we, we definitely carry pistols around here. Uh, but it don't, go, <laughs> it don't go on your hip, right? It's not your six shooter. You're not robbing stagecoaches. It goes in the left front. On your leg. On your leg. On your leg. On your leg. Now, if you're fancy, um, you will, because I'm going to, uh, you, you, have, you can have, if you have the uh, Bayer Center, you can have your seal placed on your Bayer Center so that if you wear just your cassock and censure, seal, the seal of... You worldly. Huh? You worldly. I'm worldly. You come on the mic. I'm calm. <laughs> uh, so your seal, Dr. Gamble, I'm gonna get with you privately so we can get your seal done, uh, so yes, that it can, uh, so that it can be ready uh, to go on your tip. Uh, okay. Last but not least, last but not least, is the mitre. Hear this clearly. If you are not a bishop, you don't put this on. Now, let's talk about what this does not represent. This ain't got nothing to do with Baal and the little fish crowns that they wore. Christian, I, I say that because I say that because nobody, nobody tries to disprove Hinduism, right. Buddhism, Come on. Muslims. Come on. But Come on. everything Christian, Just everybody got a reason why like what we are ain't right. Yeah. Yes, that's right. Yes. So, so what that tells me is that if everybody fighting against us, we got to be right. right. Amen. <laughs> the mitre of the bishop. The top, it should not be. Don't get, don't get your grandma and cousin to make your mind. Please go and purchase one. Professional, right? Because here's the thing, and his actually too small. <clears throat> Mitres come in different sizes based off of your rank. His is too small. It's a 10 inch. As the chief apostle, his should be 14 inches. He should have the big, he should have the big one. He, you ain't putting that on? I ain't doing all that. <laughs> I ain't doing all that. Daniel, he, a, a apostle don't want to comply. A, a apostle don't want to comply, Dr. Gamble. Because I'll have to get a whole nother. Uh, you know, you can just order this from Catholic Liturgicals. It's only $99 or $89 from Catholic Liturgicals to exactly this one, this way. Hello? Real quick, somebody called it. See, that ain't nothing but the devil. Uh, so, <laughs> uh, we almost done. Uh, and I'll take a few questions. 
the mitre represents, the opening of the mitre represents the flame of the Holy Spirit. The two tassels in the back represent the Old and the New Testament. Go ahead. Go ahead. Teach. The bishop cannot wear the mitre by, by itself. What does that mean? That this has to be, the, the zucchetto has to be on underneath the mitre. Wow. The mitre is never to be worn in class A's by itself unless you have worn a coat. If you wear a coat, you do not wear the shamir. The shamir does not go under the coat. You cannot wear the shamir. Uh, so you would only wear the roche, your band center, and your cassock. On top of that would be your coat. In, in that order. Okay. Now, when it comes to the roche, the roche cannot be worn by itself. You always have to have your cassock on up under it. But you don't have to always have your shamir on top of it. Right. Because the, the roche is white to represent your priestly authority. Okay. That's what your surplus represents. It represents your priestly authority. So, We've got the mitre. Uh, when, uh, when I come back in March, um, everybody needs to be in all black because we're going to go through a mock consecration. We'll cover ascending uh, order, descending order. What that is, how we process in. Uh, you will probably, uh, will, uh, you will probably have you serving as one of our adjutant acolytes. Uh, and possibly our national adjutant acolyte, depending on whether or not I fire the new one when I get home, or the old one when I get home. Um, so there is a specific order that we process in uh, from uh, ascend, ascending order, uh, means that the first person out is actually the lowest person in the group. So what will happen is, is that most of the times we go in ascending order, which means that it is starts with deacons, deacons, ministers. There's a break. There's a, there's an adjutant. Then you have your elders and pastors. There's a break. There's another adjutant. Then you have your overseers. There's a break. Then you have your bishops and apostles who are not who are not co-celebrants. Those are words. Uh, I'll email you all the actual adjutants manual because you'll need to know some of these vocabulary words like co-adjutants uh, or uh, co-celebrants, chief celebrants. Uh, Dr. Gamble is, a, is the celebrant. Apostle Johnson, because he is the co co uh, chief consecrator, he is the chief celebrant. Uh, myself, Apostle Ruffin, uh, Apostle Saunders, <laughs> and there's another bishop, a friend of yours. What's his name? Yes, sir. Uh, uh, bishop, uh, oh, uh, I'm thinking of him and I'm looking right at him. Apostle sent me his name, but there's another bishop. We are all co-celebrants. <laughs> right? Uh, so you all will see. Uh, so after the bishops and apostles, then it is the co-celebrants uh, who, who come in. Then it is the candidate or the celebrant himself or herself if it's a female bishop or apostle being elevated. After the after the Bishop Thomas. Bishop Thomas. Uh, with, the, with the celebrant, there will be two adjutants assigned to this celebrant. These adjutants stay by, by his or her side the entire ceremony. So I would recommend that if that happens to be you, you don't go, you, you drink water before, uh, before the service, long before service, because you will be, 
you all will be one on each side uh, of the celebrant. After the celebrant is the adjutant apostolic who serves the presiding bishop and chief apostle. And after the adjutant apostolic is then the chief apostle. That is in ascending order. Descending order is everything I just said in reverse. So the first one out would be um, the adjutant apostolic and then apostle Johnson. Then it would be uh, the celebrant with his two adjutants, uh, the, the co-celebrants, and, and, and so forth. We typically, in Covenant Family, do ascending order. We normally do ascending, it's just easier that way. So, um, as we get ready to sign off, are there any questions, comments, or concerns? Next again, March 5th will be our next class. Um, yes. Dr. Gamble, you and I will probably have a class before then um, because we're going to talk about uh, early church fathers. That'll actually be your first essay assignment. Okay. So you and I will have a class before. Uh, uh, we'll probably, you and I will, not next weekend because that's my birthday and I got plans. <laughs> okay. Uh, but the, I'll get with you. Uh, this week and we can set up a time uh, for just you and I for that class but this covers your uh, the other thing and I did not have one uh, which is the Bishop's Crozier yes. um, the Bishop's Crozier some of them are jewel uh, some of them look some of them look the same some of them don't mine looks uh, like the Orthodox Church I've got three, a three tier cross uh, Apostle has his his new one the one we're ordering for him uh, it's about 72 inches, so it's a little bit taller than me. Um, it has a hook on it with the lamb on the inside with a red stone. I'll get with Apostle and find out if we need a closure for you for your consecration. Uh, so yes. I'll let you know as soon as I find out. Okay, sir. All right, so uh, Dr. Gamble, thank you for your time. I'm going to talk with these gentlemen, and uh, I'll give you a call a little bit later on this evening. All right, thank you. Bless you. Bless you, Presiding Bishop, and the rest of the family. God bless you. Bless you, Bishop. Bless you. God bless you. Have a blessed rest of the day. Likewise. All right, so y'all got any uh, y'all got any questions? Yeah, when you get married. Recording stopped. Uh, April twenty seventh. It's your seven pumps at a time. Yeah, that be the last one. <laughs> well, I made it very clear to her the only way we get in a divorce is if she 